revelation in your word. Give understanding. Let the word make sense. Let your people receive illumination, inspiration. Oh, challenge us to trust you, to believe that you, what you said will come to pass. Lord God, let there be a rhema word tonight. Oh, let the word be broken down simply but profoundly. Let there be divine revelation and download. God, Father, change us into your image and into your likeness, God. We reject the image of the world. We reject the world and its overtures, demonic infestation and oppression. We reject, oh God, cast down imaginations and every high thing. Sanctify this house. Oh God, bring us together. Every spirit that is not pulling together. Oh, we counteract it in the Holy Ghost tonight. Every spirit of darkness that would come against your people. Oh, God, bind us together tonight. As we walk among these benches, Lord, we pray that your spirit will walk among us tonight and fill us with your presence. Oh, God, we glorify you. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, we magnify you, Lord, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Oh, help me storm the gates of heaven tonight in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh God, you said broad is the way and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. We pray that the narrow way would get some more travelers tonight. We pray that the narrow way would receive some more travelers tonight. Let your spirit be with us, God. Oh, strengthen your servant O bande bandolosh kida la bahai sidan malundu kush kedia basondo bakate ramandu shebai mandu kutende de you sanda open the heavens mandulush kebai romando ho sete lord we need you Lord, we need you. We need direction as we prepare to fast and pray. Show us, God. God, we've been blinded by the world, blinded by our associations, blinded by our, oh God, ungodly connections, by oppression, by addictions, by failure, by weakness, blinded by attacks. Oh God, but not when the wicked, even our enemies and our foes came upon us to eat up us eat up our flesh they stumbled and they fell let the enemy stumble tonight let the enemy stumble in the city of Okoe let him stumble in Togak let the enemy stumble in every area oh God show us how to be victorious show us how to win show us how to yield show us how to walk oh God I pray I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Open our understanding. Open our understanding that we might understand the scriptures. We give you praise, God. We give you glory. For thine is the kingdom. Come on and help me worship him tonight. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. You are good. You're faithful. You're true. You're kind. Lord God, have mercy on us tonight as we gather in your presence Lord let the heavens be open God let the heavens be open God in the name of Jesus Christ let the heavens be open open our understanding open our understanding Holy Spirit open our standing open our understanding oh God we thank you for what you're about to do we thank you for what you have been doing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise, God. Come on and bless his name. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Hey, Handosha. Is he worthy of praise tonight? Is he worthy of praise tonight? Is Jesus worthy of praise tonight? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Thank 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, Kusha. Yes, come on, hallelujah. Let's bless him. Amen. Anytime we come into the house of God, the house of the Lord, we must enter with praise. 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 Hey, Mando Shata. Hey, Kandodo Hoshe. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Oh, glory, glory, glory. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Glory, 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 glory. Is he worthy tonight? Is Jesus worthy tonight? Is Jesus worthy tonight? We thank you. 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 In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bless his name, brethren. Bless his name. God is good. Hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth through all generations. Greetings to everyone who is here tonight. Amen. Welcome those who are watching us online. Welcome to the saints in the sanctuary. It's time for the word. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Let's greet somebody right now. Amen. Let's shake their hand and let's tell them we're happy to see you. Amen. Don't be strangers tonight. Amen. As we get our, our, our slide up. Praise the Lord Jesus, the Abrahamic covenant. We're so happy to be here. Amen. Uh, uh, God is good to us. God is good to Israel. We're alive just today. Amen. In the city of Akobe, we had somebody get shot down the road. Amen. I tell you, it's becoming strange up in this place, but God is protecting us. And God protected you. God protected me, and we're here tonight. Are you ready for the word? Grab your Bible, amen, the one that has pages. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. I know we're getting ready. We're getting used to this uh, no-page Bible. Oh, my God. But, amen, I'm, I love my trusty Bible. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, amen, good to have everyone. Amen. We are studying the Abrahamic Covenant. Amen. And uh, we want to uh, delve a little bit more about the land of Israel and, and its strategic importance and why there's conflict over it and uh, who uh, this is the the land belongs to Israel the land belongs to God so now I want to talk about the land belongs to God yes the land does belong to God amen who believes that the land belongs to God amen hallelujah who believes that the land belongs to God. Raise your hand if you believe that the land belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are so happy to have our sister with us tonight. Sister Tia is with us. Amen. Good to have you for our first Bible study. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be looking at two scriptures. Uh, let's look at Psalms 24, verse 1 to 2, and then we go back to our Genesis text. In Psalm 24, verse 1 to 2, Amen. Um, we have the genesis of this idea that the land belongs to God. Amen. Can we read together? The earth, Genesis 20, I mean, Psalm 24, Psalm 24, sorry. Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. So tell your neighbor, the earth belongs to God. Uh, and let's turn to Genesis chapter number one. Uh, we want to make a case tonight because... There's some that are saying that uh, certain people don't have the right to a certain place. 
So we got to go back a little bit and establish who owns the land. Genesis 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God who? In the beginning, who? Can we say it a little bit louder so the enemy hears? In the beginning, who? God. And what did he do? He created the heaven and the where? The, the where? So if I make something, who owns it? All right. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Can, let us pray. Father, we gather tonight to study your word. We pray you'll open the scriptures so we might understand them and learn of thee. Lord God, hide us behind the cross. Hide me behind the cross. Let my tongue be yours. Reveal yourself. Reveal your will. Reveal how this covenant with Abraham was established upon good law, upon sound teaching, upon sound principle. And God, you are right every time. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The land belongs to God. Now, because the land belongs to God, do you think he has a right to give it to whosoever he feels like. So. This is my phone. Bought, paid for. At least, yes, it is. If I choose to give it to this young lady right here, although she doesn't really need it. Who can stop me? So, if she's a good girl, am I allowed to give it to her? If she's a not so good girl, am I still allowed to give it to her? So, the choice of giving something to someone is not so much on the person who receives, but it's on the person who is given. Because the person who is given has the right of ownership. Can we say right of ownership? And our study over the last few weeks has been about Abraham. Now for the folks who have just come in, let me give you a three minute drive by. So we're going to be driving by real fast that those guys drove by that guy and shot him up today. Um, when God establishes a covenant, the covenant is an agreement between two parties. And there are different types of covenants. Another word is that we use, but not necessarily the same, are contracts, agreements, uh, testament. Uh, so when we say covenant, we're saying an agreement between God and man. And the what did we say were the parameters or the borders of godly covenants, the what are the borders of godly covenants? What are the things that go into God making covenants with people? What, 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 what is the first thing that God does when he makes a covenant with somebody? He, he does it based upon what? Number one, love. He, he makes covenants based upon love. Secondly, he makes covenants based upon what? His faithfulness. Because he's faithful, you can know that his love is going to come through. Amen? So he's, he's God of love. He's faithful. The third parameter on whereby he establishes covenant is he builds covenant based upon what? His desire to establish relationship. He wants to establish relationship. So he doesn't just, hey, amen, I want to have covenant. No, I want to have a relationship with you. So when you understand covenant, when God is trying to say, walk before me, Abraham, he's saying, I want to come in covenant with you. I want to have a relationship with you. Do you know tonight, if you're watching, amen, that God wants to have a relationship with you? Oh, glory be to God. Listen, 
it's one thing for us for a nobody, if you can use that term loosely, to want to have a relationship with you. But when somebody who's important wants to get to have a relationship with you, that's a whole different ballgame. Oh, yeah. It's important to understand that the eternal God, the creator, wants to have a relationship with us. He says to him, walk before me in Genesis chapter 17, verse 2, and be perfect. In other words, go before me and I will lead you. In other words, I will guide you. And that's what God wants with you. Do you know that tonight? That God wants to walk with you? Not just on a Sunday or on a Wednesday night. God wants to walk with us every minute of the day. And so when we look at human history, we know that he has established covenant through his love, through his faithfulness, and wants a relationship. And in order to do that, he has to find a way to redeem us. Because we were estranged, we were lost, we sinned, we went away. So do you see those four corners? So when you look through the Bible, every covenant, if you look into them, they have these four parameters, four components. There is love, there is faithfulness, there's a desire for relationship, and there's an element of redemption. He wants to buy you back. You all know what it is to be estranged from somebody. Do you know what the word estranged means? You no longer have a relationship. You used to talk to them. You used to have a friendship. You used to go over to their house. You used to, hey, how you doing? And all of a sudden, you're estranged. Anybody ever experienced that? Come on, raise your hand and don't tell the truth to tell the lie, lie in church. Isn't it difficult to reestablish broken relationships? One of the most difficult things is to reconnect with somebody that disconnected from you. It's hard, isn't it? What causes this uh, challenge is because the pain and the hurt of what caused the break, it seems to be there lingering in the background. So every time you're talking with them, there's this, I wonder if he's going to do it again. I wonder if she's going to do it again. I wonder if I'm going I'm to get burnt again. Somebody talk back to me. And so when God decided to reestablish through redemption, he had to pay a big price. And I want us to understand the willingness of God to pay the price of redemption should make us understand the lens he's willing to go to keep the things he said he would. I don't know if you got that. Because he paid the price to reconnect, he will pay the price to keep the connection going. And so I want you to know tonight that when God says, I am going to do something, he is going to do it. Lift your hand and praise him. We must know that if he says, I'm going to bless you, he's going to bless you. If he says he's going to deliver you, he's going to deliver you. If he says he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you. If he says he's going to keep you, he's going to keep you. Oh, somebody worship him tonight. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting excited already. That's too early. Amen. The, the scripture says in Jude, I, I want to read it. This, this is not in my notes, but uh, let us read it. It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling oh, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. He's able to keep you from falling. But pastor, I fall down. The idea here is to keep you falling so you won't come back. That means he's going to find a way, brothers and sisters, to bring you back to himself. That is the essence of covenant. So, 
We looked at the Edenic covenant. We looked at the uh, Adamic covenant um, where God told him, you got to leave. and I'm going to send uh, a, a, a redeemer, seed of the woman. He had told uh, Eve before and Adam, don't eat of the tree. They ate anyway. He kicked them out of the garden. But note it, it is, who is it that is always reaching out? Who is it that is always looking for us? Who is it that is the one who never messed up, but he's coming to look for you? Somebody give God the praise. It is always God coming back. It is always God seeking. There's an old song that he was seeking from me. From the splendor of heaven to the world down below. From a manger to an old rugged tree. From the dawn of creation through the corridors of time. My savior in love. He was seeking for me. Though I knew him not. Do you know when you couldn't find your way. And you felt the brush of angels wings. It was God seeking for you. He was seeking for us in the garden of Eden. When he said Adam where art thou. Oh, glory. He was seeking for us. When the Bible says, amen, the wickedness of man rose up in the, in the earth. And God said, I'm going to destroy the earth. But the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he prepared. He said, come here, Noah. I'm going to give you, amen, how we're going to get out of this mess. You see, all them wicked, I'm going to kill them. But I'm going to save you. God does his best work. When he's looking for us, he comes with a, a solution. And he's looking for you tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are, are gone away, but he's looking for you. He's looking for us. He found David. He, he found uh, Moses. Before he found David, he found Moses. Where did he find Moses? <laughs> do, you, do you remember what happened to Moses? Moses killed a man, ran away. To, 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 to Midian, met his wife, met his father-in-law, and he was there minding his own business. Oh, hallelujah, tending the sheep, and he looks away, and it was God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It was God waving, waving in the fire. He's waving in the fire, and Moses says, what is that? Who is that calling to me? God is always reaching back, redeeming us, bringing us back to our purpose. Even when we don't even want to come, he calls us. He said, who am I that you should call me? But he says, come, I'm going to make you a God to fear. Oh, God, I feel the spirit of God and the world with his wickedness. Do you know, in spite of all the evil, in spite of the evil that's going on, do you know God is still reaching out to lost men? That's why, brethren, don't write off anybody. I don't care how wicked they are. Pray for them until their breath leaves their body. Pray for them unless God has given them over to their wickedness. Oh, I'm here to tell us tonight that it is God who is loving, who is faithful, who is the one who looks for relationship, who is redeeming, because that is the essence of covenant. Worship him. Worship him. He's able to keep you from falling because he's made a covenant that I'm going to save some people. No matter what happens in this world, no matter how many people are killed, shot, diseased, it doesn't matter what the enemy does, there will be a remnant who will be worshiping the almighty God. Hallelujah! There will be those who will be worshiping. It doesn't matter who is going to hell. There's somebody going to heaven. Let not your heart be troubled. I heard that word drop in my spirit today. As I was thinking about something, God said in my spirit, tell your people, let not their heart be troubled. On Monday, across the internet, the eclipse, the sun shall be turned to, to, to blackness. And everybody's like, I wonder what's going to happen. They're still looking. The sun rose the next day. That's why you can't get caught up in the hysteria. That's why we need to have a personal what? Tell your neighbor, you got to have a personal relationship with God. Do, do, do you know you can't live your Christian life 
based upon anybody's relationship with God, you and I need to have our own walk with God. Our daily walk, daily prayer, daily Bible reading, daily uh, communion. You don't have to never go down on your knees to pray, but just walking in his presence. Oh, I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a murmur. And his footsteps follow still. So, so, so that, that, that is the understanding. That God now, he, he, he called, uh, he made Adam. He, he messed up. He, he called Noah. He messed up. He called Moses. He messed up. And then he, and then we're going to get to the, eventually the, the, he calls Abraham. He messes up. They all mess up. The only person who ever walked this earth and not mess up is Jesus. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, so uh, did you get the backdrop? So he says to Abraham, come, I'm going to bless you with three things. I'm going to bless you with, I'm going to give you a son. The man had no children. So God can tell you things that don't look like they're going to come to pass. God can tell you, Sister Nadine, he's going to do something and you look like. In, in, in our modern problems, that really? Really? Okay, let me see how you're going to do that. Really? Like, Brianna, you're going to get married to a millionaire. No, no, you don't say really. Say, beat unto me. No, no, no. Don't say really, girl. Say, yes, Lord. Speak thy servant. And after that, you run around the church and do five flips and say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We must understand that God is faithful. He's looking out for us. He's, he's watching to bless us. Do you think that God is walking around in heaven, to use uh, the language loosely? Let me see if I can get to it. Let me see if I can mess her up. God is not in heaven trying to find ways to make you backslide. You know, some Christians think that God is out to get them. God is not out to get you. He's out to bless you. Shout hallelujah. God is not out to put you down. God is out to lift you up. God is not out to destroy you. He's out to save you. When you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, how are you going to bless me today? Lord, how are you going to surprise me today? Wake up in the morning with expectation of great blessing. Wake up thinking that God is going to surprise you. Wake in that, that this is the day that that miracle is going to take place. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Say, say, today is the day of my deliverance. Today is the day of my covenant expression. Today, what he said is going. Every day, wake up and declare, I am able to do exceeding abundantly. So, he says, I'm going to bless you with three things. What are the three things? Go to the three things. He says, I'm going to give you a here. And who was the heir that he promised? Was it Ishmael or Isaac? Who was the heir? Ishmael or Isaac? Isaac. Ishmael was man's plan. Isaac was God's plan. Ishmael came from Egypt. Do you see that? Ishmael came out of Egypt. Why? His mama came from Egypt. What does Egypt represent in the Bible? Slavery and sin. Bondage. In fact, Galatian Paul talks about the, 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 the mount uh, in Arabia tended to bondage. Anything that you do out of God's will is going to lead you into bondage. It doesn't matter how simple it is. God requires us to walk before him in complete obedience. 
That is how Jesus was able to not have a corrupted flesh. Because when the maggots came, first of all, they couldn't even come. Because there were no flies. Because the flies couldn't smell anything. Because he lived so perfect. And the promise was over his life. He said, thou will not suffer to allow thy holy one to see corruption. Obedient is the greatest blesser. You want to be blessed? Be obedient. Oh, glory be to God. Turn around and tell somebody, you want to be blessed? Be obedient. So Ishmael is not the son, it's Isaac. So the promise of the heir came to pass. And Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. And we showed you how there was trouble in the camp. How many wives did Jacob have? Literally. Israel, how many wives did he have? He had 12 sons. How many wives did Jacob have? Come on, bright students. Remember he worked for one and he got another. Come on. We went through it two weeks ago. What is the name of the, fir the first woman that gave him a child? Jacob. What is her name? Her, 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 her eyes were tender-eyed, which is a euphemism for they were like crooked. Leah. And his second wife was? What was his third quote-unquote wife? Go, go back to the slide. They said repetition is the hallmark of good teaching. All right? All right. Her name is Zilpah. Everybody say Zilpah. She was the servant of Leah. All right? And then the fourth woman that had children for Jacob was? No. Bilhah. She was Rachel's servant. So these four women had 12 sons for Jacob and one daughter by the name of Dinah. So that then gives us the here. He is the here. And so Abraham, the promise is fulfilled through Isaac. Are you with me? All right. And then Isaac has Jacob who has all these boys. But notice... Satan is a copycat. I didn't, I didn't say this, but do you notice that everything that God does, Satan tried to copy? Why do you think music is so intoxicating? You ever seen people at a concert? No matter who it is, Usher, Beyonce, they go crazy. Because worship drives us to God. And do you know we become like what we worship? But, but let me leave that alone tonight. That's another Bible study. Notice that Jacob, who is the son of Isaac, has 12 sons. But notice also that Ishmael has 12 sons too. There's a saying in back where we come from, what drop off a head. So even though the promise wasn't for them, God promised that he's going to bless the, not just the hearers in the context of the, the Isaac line, but every, the immediate descendants, thank you, but everyone that comes out of him, good or bad, going to be blessed. And that's why you see wicked people be blessed. Because they may do a good deed and that good deed carries with it a blessing. So you don't have to be righteous to be blessed. <laughs> I sound like false doctrine. So tell me now, all them people who hate God and live in nice house and drive nice cars. 
Who you think blessed them? Satan? It's the same. The Bible says the Lord caused the rain. I see y'all looking at me funny enough. The Lord caused the rain to fall on the just only. Is that what your Bible says? No, man, no. The Bible says the way some people live is like God only made the rain fall on the good people. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. So, but the thing that differentiates these two sets of people is what? What are we studying? What are we studying, saying? Covenant. What separates these 12 from those 12 is covenant. What separates you from the world is covenant. Glory be to God. We are in the world. But we're not of the world. What the challenge we're facing today in the church is we don't know who we belong to. We have multiple allegiances within the kingdom of God. So between, on Sunday, we belong to God. On Monday to Saturday, we belong to Satan. We're in the world and we're of the world. So we start dressing like the world. We start speaking like the world. We start living like the world. But God says we must come out from among them and be separate. Jesus walked the earth but was not contaminated by it. It is possible to live in this world and live righteous. Can I get a witness up in here? There's a fresh doctrine going around that no man, those teachings are old time teachings. I remember when I was growing up, you couldn't have a girlfriend in church. You couldn't be sleeping around and be on the choir. No? We are having problems deciding whether homosexuals should play the organ. And we know that they're not right. And we allow them because we can't do without the music. And so the spirit Glory be to God. Don't you know that spirits are easily transferred? And so if you're filled with a spirit like that, playing that organ, and you're practicing it, and you have embraced it as a lifestyle, that thing is going to come out. And you wonder why we have so many of our sisters not married. Because that spirit has captivated. I know it is moving from that. It has, it has so entrenched in our churches that is now moving to transgenderism. Because we have missed the idea that we are in covenant with God. Raise your hand and say, I'm in covenant with God. So we've established, go back to the here, that God has fulfilled his promise to Abraham, he gave me here. The second one is land. We started it. I'm not going to establish that right now Israel is in the fight of his life for the land of Israel. Now those of you who heard the, the, the chat, if you could pull up for me. A lot of people will march into the streets. Um, if you could pull up a, a clip that says, from, from the river to the sea. That is a, pal a Palestinian chant saying, Israel must be completely eradicated from the land. But I'm here to declare, going back to how did they get the land? So let's look at that. How did Israel get the land? God gave it to Abraham in Genesis 15 and 17. He says, I'm going to give you the land from the Euphrates all the way up to Lebanon. What right did God have to give them the land when there were people already living there? Let's talk about that. We read earlier that Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord. But before that, in Genesis 1, Moses tells us, writing by Revelation, that God created the heavens and the earth. So the earth is God's possession. It is his land. <clears throat> the Garden of Eden was his. That's why he had the right 
to tell Adam, although he had put him there to dress and keep it, he broke the covenant. He said, you got to go. What right did he have to tell Adam to go? It was his garden. He made the garden. He put the trees. He said, he said take everything. Just like uh, Pharaoh, um, Potiphar. Remember Potiphar? And Joseph? What did Potiphar say to Joseph? I'm going to make you ruler over my house. The only thing that was under Joseph's care was his wife. Joseph controlled everything but his wife. And look how Satan is doing the same thing. There's always going to be a thing that God says for you not to do. That's going to make you or break you. In the Garden of Eden, it was the tree. And they ate anyway. For Joseph, it was part of his wife. What did Joseph do? She said, Joseph... Y'all are reading the Bible. Lie with me. And Joseph said, y'all look at me like you've never heard this story before. So let's, let, let's go to it real quick. Talk about covenant. Um, this is uh, Genesis 40, a little bit. Oh, it's actually before. Genesis 39. <clears throat> Genesis, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer, this is after his brother sold him, right? Brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So <laughs> here it is. That the counterfeit son, the son of doubt, now has possession of the son of promise. Well, let me tell you, because you're in God's hand, even when you're in the hand of the, the enemy, God will still protect you. Even when you're sold out by your own brothers, his brothers sold him to his cousins, or his, what were they? Ishmael was his, his cousins, because Esau's kids. And the Lord, verse 2, was with Joseph. And he was a what? So. How does somebody who is sold into slavery become prosperous? <laughs> Do you see that? This boy was sold into what? But the scripture describes him as being prosperous. So you can be in slavery and prosper. Can you understand that there are times and seasons in your life it looks bad, but God is actually preparing you for better? He's building character. He's building faith. He's building strength. He allowed you to go through it to teach you how to pray, to teach you how to fast, to teach you how to worship, to teach you how, how to overcome. Mm, glory to God. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. There's so many, so many um, imagery right there. Egyptian and uh, Hagar. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. People can know when God is with you. Hear me, church. People can know if God is with you or not. And the Bible says that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph, you see that, you see that word again? We saw it with Noah. Joseph found grace 
in his sight. It is the same pattern of covenant. God loves. God is faithful. God wants relationship. And God will always find a way to redeem. It's the spirit of the covenant operating in the life of Joseph. And the Bible says, and he served him. You may be in a bad place, but you cannot reflect the place that you're in with your attitude. Are you hearing me? You know you deserve better. You know you shouldn't be there. You know that this is not your place, but serve well anyhow. Shout hallelujah. Don't have a bad attitude because your brother sold you in the evening. Learn how to say, oh God, we see at the end of Genesis 50, the Bible says Joseph looked at them and said, you meant it for evil. A lot of stuff you're going through now, people are doing it for evil, but God, tell someone he's working for your good. Hey! And made him overseer over his house and all that he had put he put into his hand. Do you see that? All that he had. Everything he put in his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house. And, all, and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And Potiphar did not know all he had save the bread that he ate. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife well, cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me, you good looking hunk of a man. But he refused and said unto his, and this is the verse I wanted to get to. And he said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house, and yet committed all that he has into my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. He had no right to her. He was in covenant, not just with Potiphar, but he was in covenant with God. Can I tell you, before you're in covenant with people, you're in covenant with God. We're in covenant with God in everything that we do. Let us do it as unto the Lord. Forget about what people think. Do what's right. Someone say, help me, Lord. Come on, worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Woo! Hallelujah. And he says, because Lord, and how can I do this great wickedness and sin? In other words, how can I break this covenant? How can I break this covenant? He kept me in the pit. He's going to keep me in this house. If we would think about the consequences of breaking the covenant, maybe we wouldn't break them so often. The Bible says, and it came to pass that she spoke to Joseph day by day. This is how Satan operates, brethren. He tempts you today, Nadine. And then tomorrow, you think he's going to go away? He is never going away. He's not going to stop tempting you. He never stopped tempting Jesus. He went away for a season. Covenant will always be challenged. It's not unusual for the enemy to challenge the word of God. So what we're seeing happening in Israel is a challenge to God's established covenant with Israel. And it came to pass that he hearkened on her to lie by her or be with her. So he, he, Satan sometimes won't get you to sin, but he'll try to get you to almost sin. Notice the text says, when she realized she couldn't get him to sleep with him, she said, let's come lie down beside me, man. Let's come warm me up. I know Potty, for, Potty won't mind. 
putty, you know, you just tell him that, that, that I felt sick and you are just here making sure I'm all right. That's how Satan operates. He's a seducer. Not only is he an accuser, he's a seducer. That the Bible says in the last days, we shall, be, um, even men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We're living in the time of the seduction of men. And the, the enemy is seducing us away from the covenant that has been established. The things that have made us who we are. Are you with me? And it came to pass that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the host. She waited till nobody was there. Because she never wanted no evidence, no eyewitness to what she was going to do. Satan will set you up, brethren. My God. Y'all reading the story with me. And she caught him by his garment. Lie with me, you hot looking boy, you. My skin is on fire for you. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out of there. The man was determined not to break covenant. Can we ask God to help us tonight? Come on, let's raise our hands. Lord, help me to be determined like Joseph not to break my covenant with you. And you know the story. She lied on him. And he went to prison for doing the right thing. worship so the question is God go go back to the land God gave the land to Abraham and his descendants as a perpetual memorial the land belongs to Israel because of the covenant now, why does the claim that Israel have go down some more to the land pose such a problem? Israel's claim to the land, as we said, is deeply rooted in historical and religious texts, primarily the Bible. The land, prior to being inhabited by Israel, was inhabited by the Canaanites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, a whole bunch of ites. But what characterized them, keep, keep going, next, the next one, what characterized them was the fact that they did not worship the God of Abraham. Go to the next slide. They were idol worshippers. So let me establish this. The promise of land belonging to the children of Israel is permanent. So I say permanent. So in other words, in spite of the fact, do you remember when they sinned against God and God sent the Assyrians with Sennacherib and took them and carried them away? You remember when Daniel and all the, the three Hebrew boys and Israel went down to Babylon? Whose land was it still? They lost it. Other people went there to live. In fact, when they went to rebuild the walls, this, there were a lot of other people there. And they were mocked when they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. But the land still belonged to them. Tell somebody the promise is still good. Even when Israel was expelled from their land, which has happened twice, God promised they would return. In Deuteronomy it says, even if you have been banished to the most distant land under the heavens, from there the Lord your God will gather you and bring you back. He will bring you to the land that belongeth to your ancestors and you will take possession of it. That happened, beloved, in 1948. Now I'm going to fill in from the time when they were scattered, when the Romans destroyed 
the temple in AD 70, the Jews were scattered throughout the world. The land no longer belonged to Israel. There was no Davidic line on the throne in Jerusalem. So <clears throat> here is where the problem is. Number one, people dispute Israel's right to the land because number one, God kicked out people to put them there. So let us refute that. Did God have a right to kick out those who were there? Why? It was his land. Now, this is where I, I said to someone recently that your worldview will determine how you respond to that. If you don't believe that God made the earth, you will not believe that God can give land on the earth. So when you're arguing or when you're talking to people about this issue, if they don't share your worldview about who God is and what he has done on the earth, then there will never be agreement. Because the basis of Israel's ownership is that God gave it to them. You ask any Jew today why they are fighting for the land, why they can go into Gaza and, 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 and do what they're doing. Forget the current situation. They believe and teach the land belongs to us. It is a permanent promise. He said, even if we go to a distant land and let God be true and every man be a liar. The second thing is, this promise is part of what is today sometimes called the land covenant. And if you read through that tonight, you see, oh, there's so much. We would be here all night. Go to the next slide. The Abrahamic covenant included the promise of land, Genesis 12, 1. It was a specific land. Notice that God doesn't want, the, 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 the Jews are not fighting for Egypt. They're not fighting for Saudi Arabia. They're not, the land that now is inhabited by Saudi Arabia, the Jews are not fighting for it. Why? It's not theirs. They're fighting for what God gave to them. It was a specific land. Actual property with specific dimensions from top to bottom. From the river of Egypt, these are the dimensions that are, are listed. From the river of Egypt, and where is Egypt? Which direction is Egypt to Israel? Is Egypt below or above Israel? South. Remember Abraham went down to Egypt. So Egypt is south. So the river of Egypt is the southern border of Israel. According to Genesis 12. Of Genesis 15. To the great river, the river Euphrates. That runs all the way through Iraq. In Genesis 30 to 15, God gave Abraham all the land that he can see. And the gift is Declared to be forever. Centuries after Abraham died, the children of Israel took possession of the land under Joshua's leadership. At no point in history, though, has Israel controlled all the land that God has specified. That brings us to the second point. How can you say you own the land when you've never really controlled the land? That is why to apply this to our lives. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. We must make sure we're not just topped. The Spirit of God must not just be up here in our, in our lives. We got to be filled with the Spirit. We must not allow the enemy into our space. Are you hearing me, church? Don't give Satan any credence in your life. When, when the discussion I started on, on our chat, I was saying to the, to saying to the saints in Judges that the, the chief reason why Israel is having so many problems is that at no point in their history did they do what God said. He said, drive. Why? If you don't, they'll become snares to you. Why? They worship demons. They worship false idols. They don't love me. 
They don't serve me. In fact, the iniquity of the Amorites was full, meaning all that they were doing, these people offered sacrifices of babies to Molech. They had a big saucer pan, and they, in order to grant favor with the gods, they would throw the babies into the burning cauldron, and they would worship. And they led Israel to do the same at the asteroid poles. They would have men who would be castrated. I'm going to be talking about it in another couple of months. You had men who, who, who worshipped the, the goddess Sibeli, who castrated themselves and dressed like women and worshipped at these altars in the land of Israel. The Bible says the land was polluted by idol worship. They hated God. Not only did they sacrifice to demons and they practice transgenderism, but they practice uh, abortion. They cut the babies out as a part of their worship. Some of the things that they did, I can't even repeat. It's so disgusting. And these spirits that ruled in the land of Egypt, in the land of Israel, uh, in the land of Canaan, God says, don't mix with them. In fact, when they came back from, from Babylonian captivity, a lot of those who never were taken were married to the people of the land. And Nehemiah said, you got to divorce them. Why? Because they're leading you astray. The biggest challenge we're having in our midst here is that our people have married to the world. Things that were delightful to us when we were growing up in the church. All night prayer meeting. Prayer meeting, Bible study. We're delightful. Now it's if I can get to it. Because the world has sucked us into the soap operas, the TikTok, and all the things that have grabbed people's hearts. The Bible says our hearts have been seduced because the land was never conquered. What you don't conquer will conquer you. Oh, worship God. Conquer your fear. Conquer your doubt. Whatever it is, like God, rise up tonight. Help me to conquer this. Cast down imaginations and every high thing. They went through the land. One time Joshua said, as, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But not everybody did it. So when judges came around, the people did what was right in their own eyes. You cannot have a nation. You cannot have a people who do what they want. If you have those kids to you, and amen, and your daughter says, listen. I'm going to come in when I want. I'm going to leave when I want. I want ice cream today, cookies tomorrow, pizza on Wednesdays. Children can't run the house. And so God is calling to us to understand that the second reason why there's conflict over the land, not only do people challenge God's ownership, but the people who own it allow people who shouldn't be in it to stay in it. And have relationship. There's some things we're having relationship with we should not be having relationship with. There's some covenants, alliances we've made that should never have been made. We're in the world. But none of the world. My God, my time is up. So, number one, what happened? What is the first thing? The conflict of the land is caused. Why? Because people don't recognize God's ownership of the land. So if you don't own it, you can't give it away. Who is this God anyway? Who, who is he? Where is he? Can we see him? He's in the Bible. He's in the book. Which book? The one that man, that white man made that give to black people? That has so many errors. If people don't recognize it, they're not going to they're gonna, they're gonna obey it. So we're asking people who have no allegiance with this to follow what it says. The Muslims don't recognize the Torah. Show me one Muslim that recognizes the Torah as the word of Allah. So there, there's this dichotomy where you have some people 
there will never be agreement. Because there's never, there's not an agreement on who God is. And what he has said and what he has covenant to do. God never made no covenant, amen, with these people to give them that land. And so, God don't own it. You don't control it. Are you with me? When, when you look at it, the third reason why it is such a big problem is that they left it. So, one of the biggest problems in America today is empty houses. So, I own a house. I go to Jamaica for six months. I come back. I see my storm in there. So, my storm says, and that happens in Jamaica too. You leave your house in Jamaica. You go back. Somebody move in. It happened to me in our property down where my mother used to live. So, my psalm says, you don't live here. When was the last time you were here? And the government has established laws. So if you're living there for over, in New York, 30 days, I got to go to court to get you out of my house. So what happens? The children of Israel, by sin, are kicked out of the land. So what happens to land? People capture land. So they capture the land. All, and if you read through it, the, the, the people who are going to have the land before they get it back in 1948 are people called the Ottomans. The Ottomans were like the Babylonians of old. They uh, captured, it's, uh, it, it, the, the genesis of that in, is in an area called Turkey. And so they had Turkey, and then they spread, they spread, they fought wars, and they spread out all over the Middle East. It's called the Ottoman Empire was a vast and influential empire. So after all of the, after they were kicked out, um, after they sinned, um, the Babylonian exile, they came back, then Herod was, was, was the ruler, then they sinned, they, they rebelled against Rome, and then after that they were just scattered. They, it's almost as if they ceased to exist as a nation. There's no, there's nobody, you know like you had Solomon, and then you had his son Rehoboam, and then his son, and then all of a sudden, all that ended. There's no throne. There's no government. There, there, the land ceased to be under their control. So different people, tribes now. Nice land. Hey, let's move in. So they move in. They fight over it. The Muslims come. They fight wars. They build in... in um, in the 1700s, they built the Dome of the Rock that you see there now. Whenever Islam uh, uh, conquers anything, they build a monument to their conquest. And so the Ottomans ruled for over 600 years from the late 13th century to the 20th century. It originated in modern-day Turkey, expanded to Southeast Europe, Asia, North Africa. So in 19... 11, the British conquered the Ottoman Empire before World War I. They conquered the region that we now know as the Middle East. And these British people, not really Bible reading people, they came in and they saw the map of the era. They said, all right, we're going to give, we're going to divide up the land. And they just drew a line and they started to cut the land up and gave it to whoever. So some Jews were coming back and they gave them a portion. And in 1948, the United Nations voted to reestablish Israel as a sovereign nation. Go back to the previous slide. Even if you've been banished, I will gather you back. And in 1948, the land that was promised was given back to the children of Israel. That shows you that when God makes a promise, he going to keep it. Do you see a Roman empire today? Do you see a Babylonian empire today? Do you see all these empires? No, but you see these people 
children of Abraham today in Israel. The land of Gaza was on the eastern shore of Israel. It was never conquered. The people who lived there were the people who paid tribute. We knew them as what in the Bible? They're called Palestinians today. But back in the Bible days, they were called the Philistines. Do you remember the Philistines? You remember Goliath? Goliath was a Philistine. Every day, they'll be fighting. This land has been fought over since the days of David. The days of Joshua. And the reason why they're still there is because initially they never drove them out. So what do we do? Well, recently, the Philistines or the Palestinians through Hamas, which is another um, Arab nation or Arab tribe. Remember, there are the Gergesites, the Perizzites. This is just another tribe who hates Israel. They attacked Israel on October 7th. Killed in over 1,200 people. And Israel decided that we're going to do what Joshua failed to do. But you can't do that in a modern society. How are you going to drive out people and kill them? So that's why we have the conflict. It's not easy to solve something like this. It's like. The American Indians rising up and driving all the white people out of the land. Think about it. When Christopher Columbus and Ponce de Leon and all these Spanish con con um, people came over, who was living here? The American Indians. But they felt that they had what someone's called manifest destiny. The land belongs to the white man. So they say, all right, you're going to live here and right in this plot of land right here. Don't move. And we're going to take the rest of it. Take the gold, take the oil. You stay right there. So if the Navajo tribe and the Seminole tribe and the Apaches and the Comanches get some Uzis and get some nuclear weapons and get some, some weapons and go to the White House and blow it up, you see what? So when you see Israel moving into Palestine, I wanted to think of when David used to raid the Philistines. When Samson, remember Samson? Where did he find his wife? What was Delilah? Delilah was a Philistine. So this problem didn't begin on October 7th. It began when they went into the promised land, they conquered Jericho, but they never conquered the entire land. So, when you hear them shouting from the river to the sea, it's not going to come until Jesus returns. It's not, not going to end. He comes upon the Mount of Olives. He sits. He stands upon it. The mountain splits. And he drives them out. It is going to take Jesus to finish the job. Only Jesus can solve this because he is the prince of peace. There's going to be a false peace. The Antichrist is going to come in in a latter day. He's going to come in and there's going to be a, a peace accord, but it's going to be a false peace for three and a half years. Then he's going to show his real colors. Hopefully, we pray that the church will already be raptured because we should not be here when that is going on. Now, the, the teaching has changed over the years where we most Christians believe in what's called a rapture of the church. Now, most Christians believe we'll go through the first half of the tribulation, which is seven years. There's a seven years of tribulation coming on the earth. Now, if we follow scripture, Jesus is going to return and he's going to establish a 1,000 year reign on the earth. Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David. And he shall reign, king of kings, and lord of lords. The lion shall sit down beside the lamb. 
There shall be peace on earth for 1,000 years. And at the end of the 1,000 years, God is going to release Satan from the pit. And the Bible says, even under the reign of Christ, man's heart was still open to temptation. And he's going to infest the earth. He's going to again infect humanity with hatred for God. And they're going to come against Jesus at the battle of Armageddon. And the Bible said he shall destroy them. And there shall be the great white throne judgment. And the devil, the false prophet and the beast shall be cast in fire. And there shall be a new heaven. God is going to destroy this earth and give us a brand new heaven and a brand new earth. But the land will still be theirs. So no matter what the UN does, no matter what the Antichrist does, that land belongs to God and nobody's going to take it from him. Not Russia, not China, not North Korea, and certainly not Hamas. Now, I know that that's a lot to, to digest, but it's a part of the idea that God is faithful in keeping his covenant. So now, if God will go through all of that for a piece of land, what will he do for you? Is there anything you're trying to get, you need from God? Right now, let's stand to our feet. Uh, before you stand, does anyone have any question? Because I know I've said a lot. Does anyone have any question or any point they want to make? Can I do what? Oh, you mean, all right, let's go back to the, to the definition. Um, I said earlier, before you came, that a covenant is an agreement, um, and covenants are based upon four basic parameters. One, um, uh, a covenant is based upon love. God established his covenant based upon his love for us and his desire to, to walk with us. So if there's a covenant between you and God, it's, it's based upon love. The second um, uh, thing that a covenant is built upon is faithfulness. God's covenants are established upon faithfulness. Thirdly, not only is it established on faithfulness, God establishes covenant to build relationships. God establishes covenants to build relationships. So God's covenants are based upon love. God's covenants are based upon his faithfulness. God establishes covenants to build relationships. And God's covenants uh, are established to bring about redemption. There's a redeeming element in every covenant because man sins. So there is this element of love, this element of faithfulness, there's this element of uh, relationship, and there's this element of redemption. And, and so these are the things that establish all biblical covenants. When you look through from the Edenic covenant, the Adamic covenant, the Noahic covenant, the, the Abrahamic covenant, and we're going to look at the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, and the New covenant, all of these covenants have these elements of love, of, uh, of, of faithfulness. Uh, this, this new covenant, how, how much more faithful can anybody get? Greater love hath no man than this. So he proves his love by his dying on the cross. The new covenant is established upon love and his faithfulness. Upon relationship. And man being Christ is a new creature. He wants to walk with us. And to redeem us from our sins. The parameters are all there. So those are the basic elements of covenant. Um, and if you come back next week. I'll, I'll talk to you about conditional covenants. And unconditional covenants. But we don't have the time. Um, let's stand to our feet. I, I want us to now look to God. And say Lord help me. Lord, help me to, to, to trust you that what you said is going to come to pass. If God is so faithful to a land covenant, if God will do, I want you to catch this. He is still fighting for the land he promised 
and they cannot take it away from them. People are in, I was going to talk about the Six-Day War. In the Six-Day War in 1967, the entire Arab League came against Israel on the Golan Heights. Because the Golan Heights is a, is a strategic location that overlooked the Jordan Valley. And uh, Israel realized that they were going to attack, and so they struck first. And in six days, they conquered the Golan Heights, and they still have it today. Because God fights for Israel. I, I, I could sh show you clips of soldiers that tell you how God, in the middle of the battle, angels showed up. Fought for Israel. Literal angels. There's this minefield that this army, this, this group of soldiers, they were hemmed in in this, and, and, the, and the Arabs were coming, and they were the only source of retreat was through a minefield. And the and the uh, and the uh, the, loot, the, 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 the captain of, I think, six or uh, there's a, there's a group of soldiers. And he said, the only way we're going to retreat is through this minefield. And it says, as they were going through the minefield, a wind and darkness came upon them and blew for a period of time. And as it blew, when they opened their eyes and the wind ceased, the land that covered the mines was exposed and every mine was exposed. So they could walk around them. <laughs> because God fights for Israel. I know a lot of my Christian brethren say we shouldn't speak about Israel. But they are God's people. God. He came unto his own, and his own received him. But as many as received him, to them, hallelujah, give me power to become the sons of God. Paul asks the question, has God cast off Israel? No, there's still a covenant relationship with them. Because God don't break covenant. Let us worship. Say, Lord, we're going to pray right now. Lord. Ooh, let's worship. Let's worship. And uh, di kisha maha. Hey ma, I want Sister Tasha to come and pray. I want you to pray that we will see the value of covenant. Uh, the, the power and the value of covenant. That God wants to have covenant with you. If he promised you something, he's going to do it. Can I pray in the name of Jesus? Come Tasha. Hallelujah. That you see that God is for you and not against you. I want you to pray right now that we will see the value of covenant. And receive the blessings that God has promised to us right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your words, oh God, in the name of Jesus tonight. Lord, oh God, we just pray, oh God, that we will know and understand, Father, Lord, oh God, what covenant means. And oh God, that you are not a God that will break, oh God, the covenant, oh God, that you have with us. Lord, help us to understand Jesus, oh God, to know that once you seal us, oh God, we are sealed. Help us to understand, Lord Jesus, oh God, that once you are with us, oh God, as your word said, you will be with us, oh God, until the end, oh God. Help us tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God, that we'll understand. Hallelujah, Father. Help us to understand, Lord, oh God, who you are to us. Help us to know, oh God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And as we come tonight, oh God, as we are trying to understand, Father, Lord Jesus, oh God, as some of us, oh God, may not understand, but Lord Jesus, oh God, teach us your way, oh God, so we are able to understand, oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, some of us, oh God, might be confused, but tonight, oh God, we speak to our mind tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God, to remove confusion and to understand, Father, even what is going on, oh God, in the Middle East, oh God, what is 
going on on the other side in the name of Jesus, oh God. It's not about, oh God, a property or anything, Lord God. It's a spiritual war. And God, we just pray that we'll understand in the name of Jesus in this time, oh God, that our eyes will be fixed, oh God, on you. And we'll understand Jesus, oh God. It's not about a land. It's a spiritual war, God. Help us to open our eyes and to see our spiritual eyes, oh God, that maybe be blocked and not being able to see but Lord tonight open our eyes tonight Lord Jesus uh, that we are able to see and know what is going on Father Lord there is a spiritual war and God hallelujah we are all in it but Lord Jesus oh God is the fittest of the fittest shall survive and so God we pray tonight that we will know we will understand that you are fighting on our behalf God in the name of Jesus uh, Lord help us tonight oh God I speak that so many times Help us tonight, Jesus, oh God, that we'll fix our eyes on you. Help us tonight, Jesus, oh God, that we will come to learn, to come to understand. God, there are going to be times when, oh God, we are going to realize, oh God, that we are going to that, oh God, be thinking about, oh God, coming to Bible study because there are times, oh God, that is coming when the doors will be closed, God, when we will be in our house, God, and we will be yearning for these words, God, and we'll be crying out, God, but Lord, help us, Jesus, oh God, that every time we come in to Bible study, Lord Jesus, and every time we hear the word, we will be connected to you, your covenant, oh God, that keep Israel in the name of Jesus. They came through, God, oh God, you parted the Red Sea. They were able, oh God, to go through in the name of Jesus. That's the same covenant that we have tonight in the name of Jesus. Only if we see, God, we will understand. And only if we see, God, we will know. And only if we see, God, we will realize, oh God, that who you are to us. You are our Father in the name of Jesus. You are our friend. You are our comforter. You are our keeper. Oh God, you fight for us, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God. And so tonight, as we come, Lord Jesus, oh God, help us, Lord, not to only be hearers, but doers of your word. Tonight, Jesus, oh God, help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to study thyself, approve unto God, that our work might need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And as our pastor come tonight, Lord, and as he give us the word, Lord Jesus, oh God, will you bless him, oh God. God, overflowing blessings, oh God, upon him, Lord Jesus, is going out and is coming in, mighty God, tirelessly, oh God, coming to Bible study, tirelessly, God, going home, doing homeworks and all these other things, well, God, will you bless him tonight, will you keep him, will you strengthen him, God, physical and spiritual strength tonight, oh God, we pray, in the name of Jesus, may he lack nothing, God, hallelujah, God, may you continue to pour this knowledge, oh God, in him. Oh God, so he can, oh God, pour it into us. God, because that's what we're going to need in this end times. And so God, we pray for every person tonight that they will hear the word. God, not just go home, oh God, and let it pass through, but sit on it, Lord, oh God, and to know Jesus, oh God, you're fighting on our behalf. Oh God, you love us so much. Lord Jesus, oh God, you care for us so much, oh God. And God, I know that you're with us tonight. Night. Will you bless each home tonight, Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus, as we declare, oh God, as for me and our house, God, as for we and our house, we will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. And tonight, God, we just want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray tonight for Sister Young. Mighty God, let me your hands, oh God, be upon her tonight. May you strengthen her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. May you give her a double portion of strength in her body, in her hands, in her feet, in her mind, in her spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. May you touch the very part, oh God, that is, oh God, excruciating pain tonight. May you touch that very part tonight, Lord. And may you lead her, God, in the name of Jesus, in healing. 
God, we declare healing in our body right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we call it done in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I see. We see, God, her coming up here, oh God, to preach again. We see her moving, oh God, strong in this house, God. We see her, God, oh God, empowering other women. We see her, God, writing that book. We see her, God, doing the things, oh God, hallelujah, that she was not able to do, but she's doing it now. God, we are looking at the now because your word said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we are looking at the now God tonight in the name of Jesus and we are believing oh God that healing we are manifest oh God the manifestation oh God of your words being performed Lord Jesus we are going to see God we are waiting and so God we thank you tonight oh God and we call it done in the mighty name of Jesus God we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we give you all the honor in Jesus name Come on. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. I feel his presence. Healing is going out. Healing. Healing is going out to AP right now. Mando Shata. Rama resurrection life. Resurrection power. In the name of Jesus. Come on and worship him. Hey, glory be to God. Receive healing. I don't know where you're watching from. I don't know what your needs are tonight. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Be healed. I pray for Sister Gloria tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, give her a touch from heaven. Lord, reverse, reverse every plot of hell. In the name of Jesus, over her life. In the name of Jesus, deliver her from evil. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let there be oneness of heart in this house. In Jesus name Mother Reed, I command healing in your body. Ah, Sister Tasha, go lay hands on her. Hey, Sister Scott, go lay hands on Mother Reed right now. In the name of Jesus, the devil is a liar. Mando shata. Hey, mando hushe. Haya ba ba ba. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, young lady, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come here. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hey, Shababa, daughter, come, mama, 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 sha. In the name of Jesus, lay, 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 lay hands on oil. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. The devil is a liar. We rebuke that sickness. We rebuke it by the blood of Jesus. Satan, take your hand off God's property. I said, take your hand off. Take your hand off. Take your hand off. Take your hand off. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Come on, Zion. We are Hato Shanda. If you're online, if you're in the house, join me in prayer. We pray for healing right now. Healing. Heal, heal, heal the foot. Heal the leg. Mando sap. Let fire from heaven. Let fire from heaven with the anointing oil from the service as it is anointed on her feet, God. Wherever on her body that's hurting, we believe God for an instant healing. God Almighty, do it for her right now, Lord. Do it for her right now, Lord. Do it for her right now, right now. Shato Mahai, Lakumahando Hoshe, Sebahanda Rahushete. Heal God, heal, heal. Heal in this house, heal across the land, heal this nation. Oh God, break the back of wickedness. Every evil force, we appeal to the council of heaven. Oh God, we appeal to the councils of heaven. Oh God, to the court of heaven. Lord God, overturn the plots of darkness. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, overturn the plots of hell. Lord, rescue the perishing. Let thy kingdom come. In the name of Jesus, let thy kingdom come. 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 In the name of Jesus, let thy kingdom come. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let healing flow. Let, oh God, apostolic 
apostolic authority be established in Okowe. Lord, you see the crime, you see the violence. We rebuke the spirit of death. We rebuke the spirit of robbery and, and thievery. Oh God, all manner of evil, God. Oh Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. Heal, heal. Lama, even this knee tonight. Laba, let, accept, let healing take place quicker. Rababa, fire, fire. Masheke dabasa. Lord, I believe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed, be delivered, be set free. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We give God praise. He's here. The presence of the Lord is here. I said the presence of the Lord is here. Haya Mahashata Yakubai. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Kushada Bahaya. Uh, if you're sick right now, lay your hand on where it hurts and say in Jesus' name. Right now, if you're in your home, in your car, oh God, you're driving home. I don't know where you are right now. Oh God, if you're in this room right now and there's a, there's a problem somewhere in your body, lay your hands on it in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on it, lay your hands on it. And God, I command, Lord Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we plead the blood against every sickness, every disease. Oh God, everywhere you went, you healed, you did well. You did good, God. We, we are walking in, in the name of Jesus. You have authority. Use your authority. Use your authority tonight that is given to you. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. In Jesus' name. Woo, Shabbat. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. Fire, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, 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 restore the altar of fire, restore the altar of fire in this house, restore the prayer altar of fire, oh God, Namashondo, Lebahande di Kisata, in the name of Jesus. Let the fire, revival, we speak revival. We speak revival in the midst of a cold Laodicean spirit. We speak revival. We speak revival. Mendo shatai. Yando manda. The Holy Ghost is in this house tonight. Mando kosha. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Oh, though Jacob said, I will not let thee go until you bless me. Oh God, we're holding on to you. Hallelujah. Let your mouth, let your mouth declare your healing. I am determined. I am healed. I am delivered. I am more than a conqueror. Let the faith of the I am rise up in you tonight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I pray for your people. I pray for Togak. I pray for Togak. Oh, heal. Heal, Marvella. Heal. My God, my God. Mane bakatolo shete. Shiki dada bahasata. Heal, Lord. Heal, heal. Heal. Heal the land. Heal the land. Heal the land. Mighty God, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he's here. The presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, let there be a, re a, re a reveal of your power and your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise. We give you praise. Ooh, Shabbat. He's here, Bridget. He's here. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Ooh, Shabbat. Yes, God. Yes, God. 
Yes. Yes. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. For you are holy, Lord. Holy. Redeem us from the power of darkness. Redeem us from the power of darkness. blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus he's working he's working he's working you're gonna be all right mom you're gonna be all right we plead the blood we plead the blood we plead the blood we plead the fire who shanda ah yeah fire 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 burn out cancer burn out disease Burn out demonic infestation. Burn out. Oh God, destroy strongholds tonight. Casting out imaginations and every high thing. Destroy every stronghold of darkness in this house. Oh God, in our bodies, in our minds. Oh God, everything established to keep us bound. Every weight and anchor be loose tonight. Cut every demonic anchor in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk in our destiny in this season. In the name of Jesus. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. Mighty God of Daniel. Woo, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for you tonight. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for you. Glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we go, we just want to thank you all for coming tonight. Oh, we went a little bit extra, extra than we normally would, so please forgive us. But the presence of the Lord is in this house tonight. Amen. We believe in divine healing. We pray that, amen, our sister is healed in Jesus' name. She's healed in Jesus' name. Uh, receive your healing. Amen. If you're watching tonight, receive your healing wherever you are. Declare, let the weak say I'm strong. Receive your healing. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. He's going to do it, brethren. Amen. He's doing it. He's doing it. Amen. We're going to, before we say the benediction, receive an offering tonight. And you can give electronically. You can give. Amen. There's a bucket here. Just come and let's be a blessing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I hope we learn something tonight. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. The land belongs to God. He can give it to whoever he wills. And he is going to do what he says. Ooh, glory be. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. My God, my God. In the name of Jesus. My God. Thank you. Glory be to God. Etalamashoto cosete. Sinda canta nena cachoto. Luma mande de sete. Sheki da sata. Nakundu lubuku shoto. Nikinda nasoto. Lo shekinda sata. Nena hosondo lo shete. Sukushata yaka. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bind every force of hell. Oh, God, that has gathered against your children in this season, in this house, God. Oh, God, expose, hallelujah, anything that is not like you. Oh, God, and reveal the good in the name of Jesus. Let there be a oneness of spirit in this house. We speak it. Can the church help me speak it? Oneness of spirit. Manaka soto shata. Oneness of spirit. Oneness of spirit. E kanda kato yokushondo dokoso le de kisata dalakasa in Jesus' name. Thank you for your gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. We we thank God for you. We thank God for you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? Thank you. God bless you as you go. Amen. Let me follow you outside to keep you safe in the name of the Lord.
Praise the Lord Jesus. We're so grateful for everyone who came on. Tune in next time, next week, to be with us on Sunday morning. There's going to be a great Holy Ghost move this Sunday. Amen. Invite a friend. Please invite somebody to church on Sunday. And remember, Jesus loves us. He loves you. He died for you. He's for you. He's not working against you. We love you. Amen. You are dismissed.